Good afternoon and welcome back everyone um, for the third session on uh, Gen AI um, in Enrine Empowerment. Um, so uh, any questions or any concerns, clarifications from uh, the morning sessions? Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, number one was, uh, you told something about reinforcement learning. Mm -hmm. And in that, you uh, gave some examples. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there's a child and we uh, give him reward and punishment. So how uh, we can reward a machine uh, or we can punish a, punish a machine as he can learn from reward and punish? So that is my first question. And number second is, uh, what is the main difference between machine learning and deep learning? Okay, um, um, excellent questions. Um, so, uh, reinforcement learning, it's, it's about, so basically uh, what it does is, um, uh, what you do um, in machine learning is that uh, you uh, get it to learn from other behavior and then take new actions, right? Uh, yes, yes. I'll come to that one. So that's the basic one, right? So you learn from what, from data, and you get it to do new things. So with these new things, uh, may not be things that you always do, or you you might not know whether which one is correct. Like a child, child does does not know which one is the right thing or the wrong thing to do. Like a dog, when you say sit, you don't know. You you can keep telling it to sit, but you don't know. The dog doesn't know which one is the sit one. So when it says when it sits down you treat it him it's the same way when you treat when you're training a reinforcement learning machine learning algorithm if it's if it's correct you'll give it a positive reward so it it will learn that as the better one actually uh, we are talking about reward and punishment mm -hmm. so how can we justify how can we give the punishment to the machine Okay, so punishment is low is a low mark or a negative mark. So how can we give a machine low mark and uh, high so marks? It's not the machine. So so it's like this, right? So I come to this junction. I have three paths to take, right? So based on some criteria, I need to make three paths. I have three paths to make. Um, hundred paths doesn't matter. Now based on which path I take, I get a reward. So if I go this way, I'll get. Hundred reward. No, actually, that's a human example. I know that. Yeah. But so the machine the is the same thing. So if if you are expected to do something, if you do the correct thing or the most appropriate one, you get hundred marks, right? And if you do this one, if you get lower marks. So what happens is, it learns by getting more marks to this one, this path get established more. So it's like, I mean, I don't want to go into the details of, of, of like, you know, this comes from neural networks and, and all those, you know, there are mu multiple models, just not that. But so, it, it is, so how the algorithms work is, it, it's not that it's, so machine learning, the difference between machine learning and, uh, so I don't, I don't want to go to de details because this is not about machine learning, but machine learning is not a rule-based system. So in a rule-based system, somebody will say, when you come here, if it's, um, this particular for reason go this way, but this particular reason go this way. Machine learning is not like that. You learn to do things based on many criteria. So, so then you have preferable choices. So based on that one, you will get rewarded so that this path will have more, more like you know, more uh, benefit for you to go. So it's, it's, it's the way the algorithm works. So it's maybe, let's take it as a probability. So like, you know, if you, if you, there's a probability of getting 90 marks going this path based on certain criteria, you will do that more often, right? So it, it can be implemented in many ways. I don't want to go to the algorithms, but it's basically rewarding more by like, you know, making this path more probable to choose based on certain criteria, the keywords, whatever. It could, it could be bits of many reasons. Machine learning and deep learning. Okay, very quickly, just a couple of sentences, okay? Um, I actually had it in, in, in my slides. Um, uh, okay, I, I don't want to go to that detail. Um, so the idea is this, machine learning, uh, it's, it's like machine learning previously, uh, you had to kind of be a computer scientist or a computer engineer to know, where, uh, know what to do. 
So if you if you if you learn uh, AI or computer engineering, AI or machine learning, you will learn how to extract the. As I said, you know, data is important. So how to extract the feature, what features to use, how to put it into the next model and get the output and put to the next model and do it. So that's how machine learning went. So people had to learn AI or machine learning in depth, uh, study different way, uh, algorithms and a lot of things, uh, try different algorithms and see which one would work, uh, do a comparison and all that. What happened with deep and deep learning is that this entire process, the pipeline made, was made automated, was automated. That's what also may go and try a lot of different things. What made it possible is the higher computing power. Because now since you have higher computing power and the data storage capacity, the computers could actually try many things and give out the output without you having to go and do these things manually. Previously, it's like, it's like, uh, the difference between automating and streamlining. Automating, I do, do you know the difference, difference between that? And automating is that, so you, you uh, like let's say for example, um, application process, you can automate. Now, once you get the applications, you have to analyze it. You can automate that part. Then you, you uh, analyze that one and, and give the output, you can automate that separately. But streamlining is make this entire process complete from end to end. So that's what deep learning does. Done? Okay, uh, in one of your slides, I have seen that you said that uh, the machine learning detects the spam, spam filtering in supervised machine learning. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, I was wondering to see that slide. Uh, it was mentioned that supervised machine learning checks the spam emails. Mm -hmm. But I think the spam email checking is actually a rule based model that is very different from machine learning because machine learning learns from previous data previous behavior of the data uh, but the spam detection is totally different from it because in spam detection we uh, provide some uh, wordings for example there are some blasphemous words we provide to the machine that yeah. if uh, we receive such type of word yeah. then uh, it should be automatically diverted to the spam rather than input uh, inbox so uh, in that slide i was seeing that the uh, spam detection was a example of supervised machine learning but i think it should be corrected it is not a part of supervised machine learning okay uh, i'll suggest you go and read about this one again uh, how much mach uh, machine learning is used in spam, um, and, and spam filtering is one of the the earliest earliest uh, examples of where machine learning was used. Rule, so it's a very good example you said because rule-based system has to like, as you said specifically very correctly, we have to know. So human has to go and write, if this is what it is, write it. Spam, spam generators, spam uh, people who are using this spam are so ingenious, they will use actually generative AI to do it. Now, if you are to identify a generative way I made a spam uh, emails, just say that, you know, you're you, somebody using generative AI to create spam emails, right? And, and you have, like, it comes up with very, I mean, you know how, how, like, you know, if you have seen spam emails, they are very, very adaptive. They adapt that, it's like spam and, and uh, phishing emails are like one of the, is, if you take uh, cyber security, that's one of the things that you can't uh, really get rid of. Why? Because they are changing it very rapidly because social engineering, I'm sorry, I'm going out of time, but I just finished, the, uh, answer this one and feel finished. So social engineering, like, you know, social engineering means uh, uh, basically uh, trying to um, fool a, a person. That is the easiest thing in cyber security. That's the easiest thing. All the, you can have all the equipment, all the technology in the world, but if, I, if I can fool you, I can get you all your personal details. No, right? I mean, I just mean to say that yeah. the spam filtering mm. is either a supervised machine learning or rule based. That's very simple. That's Sorry. very simple question. Yes, actually, spam is just a rule that mm -hmm. either that data is this okay, one sorry. or this one. No, it's not because spam keep changing. If if a human has to come behind a computer and detect what is spam and write a rule every day, will be. I mean, our our email. So if Gmail has used that technique, uh, our email, our our inbox would be filled with just spam, nothing else, because the spam is rapidly moving so rapidly. So that's why machine learning is actually like machine learning is actually spam filtering is one of the areas that I think machine learning is used so extensively 
I mean, rule basis is not even close to solving that. Right? Anyway, I, I don't want to go into details of that one. Uh, because not just supervised learning, it's actually unsupervised learning also, like, you know, anomaly detection and a lot of different things are there. You know, it's, if it's not in a normal cluster, you can detect it. Anyway, I think we should stop there. Right? But I, 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 okay, I, right. I, 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 I got to your point. I, I have just last question from okay. your previous lecture. Okay. Uh, as you said in your slide that the generative AI is uh, unsupervised machine learning. But as far as I know that, the generative AI is actually a combination of supervised learning as well as self-learning, uh, or you can also say reinforcement learning. Mm -hmm. But in the, your slide, it was uh, mentioned that the generative AI is a unsupervised machine learning. Where did I say that? You can see the, your slides. I'll check. I don't think. But it's a combination. You're right. So if I said, I'll correct that. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Um, so um, let's let's go into um, the last um, session. Um, unfortunately, as I, since we started late, a um, uh, bit of behind schedule, but uh, I'll... I'll We'll try to catch up in the sense that uh, understand uh, how we can use, as I said, uh, um, the whole idea of this session um, is to learn to learn, right? Uh, just to re rewind back to uh, the first session, um, we just uh, touched upon understanding how rapidly the world is evolving. Whatever I teach you, to, if I teach you anything today, I'm not trying to teach you anything today, but if I teach you something today, it's already obsolete because it's, it's something that I learned probably last night. It's already obsolete, right? Because things are evolving so rapidly. So the, the only thing that you can do to stay ahead of the curve is to learn to learn, keep evolving, right? Um, so that's what I'm going to show very quickly uh, with few examples. I invite you to learn, understand what I'm doing, and go beyond that. And if possible, not if possible, um, uh, please share your experience and all that. I'll share my email address. Uh, please share your experience. Uh, whatever you are doing from now on, any stories, any user cases, any way that you're using Gen AI and AI um, and all this technology in improving these uh, particular fields, please let us know. As I said, we want to develop the community resource so that you know we can learn from each other and, and, and make us better as we go forward, right? So, so um, I, I just showed you a few examples. Uh, if you have any particular questions, I'll come back to later. I got one question also from one gentleman uh, during lunch. Um, so I'll come back to specific cases uh, to to talk about it. Um, and uh, I, if you have very uh, specific case, use cases, examples, you, um, you are very welcome to come and share those with us uh, because that's how we'll be able to go forward uh, from here. Um, so we were talking about prompt engineering. Now it's like, you know, Gen AI, whether it's text or... Um, okay, okay. Right, so... So the whole, um, I mean, getting Gen AI to do anything for you, it's about a prompt engineering, understanding how it can serve you, right? Um, it's the same as, uh, similar to, not same as, similar to how we learn how to use Google search, right? Uh, Google search, you can just type something, you will find something, and then you'll learn to refine uh, the use of uh, prompt engineering. So I'm just gonna show you a few, and we'll try a few different things. Uh, later, uh, after that, right? So now, I, like when when I I mean I, I I teach ICT for teachers, educators, and all that. So I do the Google search, how to do Google search, Google Scholar search, and all that. So the only thing I tell them is that only thing you need to know is what to search. Once so you know what to search and how to search, you can search anything, right? And the same thing, and actually even better when it comes to gen. Gen AI. Why? Because how to do prompt engineering better? Who do you go and ask? Do you ask Asda Bandar Naik or do you go and ask uh, Chat GPT? I ask Chat GPT or Gemini, so don't ask me. Right? If you want to know how to use Gen Chat GPT or Gen AI or prompt engineering better, go and ask 
than AI. It knows better than me. It knows better than most people, actually. It knows better than actually people who create Gen AI. Why? Because it's, it's learning from everybody, right? It's, it's sourcing from everybody and giving you answers. So what should we look at? Well, let's, let's just look at a few things. These are things that I mentioned previously as well. Clarity and specificity. Now, this is not just Gen AI into our questions and answers. As I mentioned earlier, you, you, you um, try to automate any task, right? As I said, you need to break it down to clear parts. Complex task, machine learning can't do. Right? Machines won't understand complex things. They will do complex things only if you break it down to simple task. So first thing, is it clear? Is it specific? Like that's what you do. So if it's clear and specific, the machine can answer you. Otherwise, it will give you gibberish or, or something that you are not expecting or something that's not useful. Right? So be specific. Right? And be clear. And if it's ambiguous, if they can give you multiple answers, well, if the question is ambiguous, you'll get an ambiguous answer. Very simple, right? Now, uh, when I ask that question, what are the major concerns using re uh, useful and correct prompts? Yeah. Right? So it gave me a list of things, right? It gave me a list of things. I was like, okay, I like, no, I, I can't put this in the slides, you know, I mean, I can, but it will take ages to copy and copy multiple pages. Can you please put it into a table? Very nice table, which I can put into a PowerPoint slide and easily share, which you can take a photograph and see, but you know, you can just learn how to ask this question and do it yourself. Much better, right? But if you really want to, you can just take a photograph and you'll remember. Not remember, you might never look at it, but, uh, but uh, you know, but still, it will be there, right? So, I mean, when you are asking a question, you can just tell, tell it to, this is the way I want my answer as well, right? How to format it, right? So different things, you know, these are things that we, we discussed earlier, right? Um, how to do different things, right? Um, so you can ask these questions. Um, do these things one by one. Try to learn these things one by one, right? So let's look at this uh, in, a, in a different uh, uh, frame work. Right. Um, how do I improve my prompting technique? Now, uh, if I ask that question, um, uh, this is once again, as I said, uh, it's very, um, it's basically um, uh, the way uh, I asked, uh, I mentioned earlier. But in this one, that is not the, just the prompt. I am, I'm asking it to be kind of give context and, and examples as well. Because the earlier one, I just asked, what can you do? It just gave me breakdown of some theoretical things. Now I'm asking, okay, tell me how to improve my prompting technique. Give some context. Give me some examples so that I can actually do this and try. So you get, you get ChatGPT or Gemini or whichever um, Gen AI um, LLM tool you want. You keep it on one side. You ask, you ask this question or this type of whatever you want to improve on, right? You can be very specific and say, how to give me more examples of how to be clear and specific in my input, right? It will give you more and more examples. Or you can be very specific. You can say, I want to, I want to um, um, write a, a memo, right? Or I want to write a report. Show me how to, how to ask the question, how to, in how to instruct the uh, Gen AI with a very clear and specific instruction, right? So it will give you very specific examples. Now even here, right? Avoid, uh, avoid vague and overly broad instructions, um, right? So include any necessary background information so that the AI can produce relevant and accurate results. Now, Understand this one, I, I told you, if, if you can remember, a lot of people have asked me this question. Um, so a lot of people say, don't give to like, you know, long instructions, right? Then I go and tell people, okay, my, my prompt was like 11 pages long and the last one I made actually 36 pages long. It's like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. You're saying, you know, you make the prompt as unambiguous as possible make it precise as possible, make it specific as possible, 
and then you are saying you are creating 36 page so somebody was asking i mean i think roshan was asking me like you know this doesn't make sense right because like you know that's not the instruction like what people say wherever you say now you go to like you know internet and people come up with you know 10 known techniques would get the best results out of gen ai and say very short instructions okay no it didn't work for me so what's the difference right so this is the difference so uh, the difference is this, understand the instructions and the background information. So I ask very, very simple, short question. My, my, my instruction is like one line, that's all. Everything else is background information. What is background information? So for example, I made a, a proposal, uh, a very, very long proposal. Um, so I give the entire instruction, this is what I want to do, this is, okay, here's the instruction from the grant, the funding agency, the entire manual, I just copy paste, relevant stuff, I copy paste, I, I give the background for my proposal, I give you the background of my organization, I grow, give background about myself and other PIs of the grant and co-PIs, right? I give the format that they are expecting, right? I tell all the motivation of the grant, what I want to do. I don't worry about formatting. I don't worry about language. I don't worry about putting this nicely. I just give all the background information. And I go to UNESCO, uh, what do we call sustainable development goals and, and copy from there and put, okay, I want to satisfy this. Actually, I don't have to. If I say I want to satisfy this sustainable development goal, it already knows. It, I tell it, uh, I am from uh, uh, Learn, it actually knows, right? Um, so I do this, I give all the information that it does not know, and I say, can you please write this proposal? It won't write the entire thing really well first time, but I can revise the parts I want. So this is the difference, right? Um, so instruction has to be very, very clear and precise, but you can give all the background information that it does not know. If the background information is already known, you can just ask it uh, and, and say, take that one, right? Um, iterate and refine your prompts. This is the same thing, you know, this is uh, like, you know, even Google search, you search for something you don't get, you just put add more words, remove words, and so on, right? Uh, put quotes, remove quotes. So it's a similar way, you, you use Gen AI, you try something, it doesn't give you what you want, you try again, and you add more things, remove things, and see what works, right? Because don't, don't go and believe anybody who's saying anything, these are the proven techniques. It's proven techniques yesterday, or one week ago, right? Learn from it, try it out, make your own technique, and, and Make your own technique every day. Revise your technique every day because Gen AI is changing, right? And you will keep learning how to use it to do the task you want. You won't get it in the first go. You might not even get in the, the hundredth go, but if you keep trying different things, it will start giving you what you want more and more, better and better until you master it. Well, you'll never really master it, but because it keeps evolving, but you'll get better and better, right? So. What I mentioned earlier, break complex tasks into simple prompts. So what I do is like, you know, so to use the example I used earlier, writing a large proposal, I write the entire thing. It's, it's usually pretty good, but not to, I mean, pretty good in the sense, I mean, it, it, it is most often than not much, much better than anything I could have written. But I, I'm not satisfied now. I want it to even be better, right? So what I do, I go to each section. Now break down, okay, now, okay, this is great. Let's take the motivation part. I want these things included in the, my motivation. I want these things uh, explained better in my motivation. Can you rewrite the motivation with these factors, right? Now it writes only the motivation part and I tell it exactly how to change it and all that. Right? And you, you go into like, okay, I have the methodology explained, but I want these things to be changed. I want these things added. Uh, I want these things to be more clearly explained. 
So I can refine and revise, break it down, even methodology, I can break it down to multiple sections and do. You can, you can try anything, there's no, there's no uh, what do you call, penalty for trying, right? You can keep trying, you know, the only way you will learn how to do it properly, by trying only, right? You won't learn it by listening to me. You, you, have to start, you, you have to start doing it, you have to keep it doing more and again and again and again. Right? And constraints and guidelines. So, the constraints, right? What are the constraints? Okay, I want an introduction to this particular one, limited to 200 words, right? I want my motivation, limited to 500 words, right? Write the methodology, limited to 1000 words. Right now, you can put the constraints, and then um, you can put uh, how to format it. Uh, write it in paragraphs. So write it in bullet form. Um, uh, use subheadings. You know, you can use tell it to do it many different ways, any way you like. I I prefer bullet points and subheadings and all that because it's easy to anybody to read rather than long and long paragraphs, right? So whenever I make a, unless somebody specifically instructs for you to use paragraphs, I will always go with subheading and bullet points uh, and explanations uh, because it's easier for anybody to just go through and understand the similar way, as you can see, right? Subheadings, bullet points, and explanations. Easy to just follow, right? Uh, so even in your you know, things, unless somebody wants that, I mean, you can't go and do that in a, your PhD thesis, definitely, right? But you can do it here. And you can do the formatting, how to format it properly and so on. You can, you can change the tone. You can say write in a professional tone, right? I mean, probably in these kind of things, uh, you might not use other tones, but you know, if you are using Grammarly, um, uh, you know, when you are writing letters, you are writing emails, you can say, write in a friendly tone, write in a professional tone, write in an academic tone, right? You can, you can use different tones to, to make it according to the situation, right? Now, I mean, this is, this is a biggest concern. A uh, uh, few other, few members ask the same question and I, this is a question that I get every single day. Um, our students are using Gen AI, what should we do, right? Um, um, there are a lot of concerns, there are, there are a lot of debate, um, and I don't want to get into the middle of it. My, my answer has always been, right? Uh, number one, we are not native, I don't know how many native English speakers are here, we are not native English speakers, right? And anything you do, right, if you have a great idea, your language knowledge or your writing knowledge uh, should not be a burden to get it out. Be it research, be it anything else, right? Today, our knowledge and our capacity is measured by how good our English is, English writing is, which is absurd in my opinion, right? This is actually the bane of our education culture that we have inherited from, uh, from the West. And we think English knowledge, and, the, and then we put so much emphasis on this plagiarism and on everything, which is basically denying most of our kids a brighter future. Why? Saying, unless you know how to write in English, you don't have a future, which is wrong, in my opinion. If that has to be changed, that has to be changed by us. Right? We have to come together and, and change it. Right? <coughs> we can't go with you know, publishers, all these things, and saying, no, 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 unless you know English, you can't uh, be better. That's wrong. Right? So that's my opinion, and I don't want to enforce it on others, but all these things that are put on our head, I believe it's wrong, and I fight against it, uh, uh, and of course fall in trouble as well, but I think it's time to let it go and... Uh, uh, because knowledge of English, well, it used to be a problem, but now we have the tools, we have the tools to forget about language. I mean, you don't go and tell, you don't go and tell an Englishman or an American, no, you have to run, come and publish your thesis in Hindi or Urdu. Why is it other way around? Right? 
it should not be the way it has to be changed and and unless we change it you know we we, we will not never see a development in our part because most of the generation most of the kids are denied of um, becoming better in their education right but now it is possible right it's possible now why because you can use gen ai to have the your ideas write it in any way and ask it to create it in nice uh, grammatically correct in put in the tone you want and so on right it's now you just have to have the data analysis or the ideas you can express it now right soon we'll have the way that you can express yourself in urdu or hindi or singhalese or tamil and and write the entire thing in english and and disseminate to everybody right now that is actually a, a world that i would want to live in right that i i would want my son to live in right so that that is possible with gen ai so the possibilities that i said we are everybody is looking at in the terms of <coughs> what are the what are the downsides i see the possibilities and and opportunities that are there right so um again experiment um ask for multiple outputs once again you input and you can uh, i mean gemini does already <laughs> Uh, automatically it gives three outputs um um in other things you can either uh uh do a recycle and get a new one right or you can just uh, ask it to rip, to do multiple things or you can give ask it to just give multiple outputs just in the first go and and then look at you know what what you prefer as i so somebody was asking as i said you know i was just saying um this proposal writing and 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 different things i just create multiple drafts right because each draft is very different it's not like google search gen ai is is generates new so when you ask the question in this algorithm because this we are talking about 1 points now more than 2 trillion data points so when you ask the question it will go and and end up in one place next time it will take one round and go and end up in the other end of the thing so the type of answer you get could be very different and each answer would have good parts and bad parts so what i normally do is i get this um, uh, i get this uh, each answer put it into a draft use google docs just copy paste right and then go through okay where is the motivation best okay that one is good put into the main draft okay but this one has another sentence which is much better than this one okay let's copy paste that and put it here and remove the other one you can just mix and match and and do anything you want there's no restriction of doing all that so that's why you know just just try multiple options and see which one and then you will learn how to make it use it better right use follow up questions keep asking you know um, i was um, um okay uh, if you know salman khan uh, from khan academy uh, if you have if you don't know who salman khan or sal khan of khan academy go to youtube and watch his ted talks there are two ted talks that by sal khan which are very very famous um go and listen to those uh not the actor right you're not talking about the actor right you know not the actor not the hindi movie actor salman khan khan academy uh so uh, he's the one that's online uh, this educational portal all khan academy so sal khan or salman khan uh, if you go and uh, search sal khan um, ted talk um, you will get uh, a ted talk about uh, mastery learning and and uh, uh, this gen ai uh, in education and he talks about you know uh, his how his niece is now using gen ai uh, chat gpt and you know he says uh, he uh, she ask a question and then say um uh, okay can you do please and 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 sorry and then because like you ask him more questions no don't worry it's like it's just a machine you don't have to say sorry it's going to not get in tired it's not you know uh, you are not waking it up right just go and ask the questions i mean it's, it's never hurts to be polite of course but you know don't worry like you know you ask many questions and like you know i think it's like you know it's the nature of i mean i think it's our fault you know as an academic students are like you know kids are scared you know if you ask too many questions you know now your sir is going to get angry right so we are like you ask enough questions and no stop 
No, don't worry. Chat GPT or Gemini or Gen AI will never be like uh, like the human teachers. It will never get angry. It will tell you if you keep asking. So ask follow-up questions. Ask you know more things. Clarify more things, right? And uh, right. So so like you know. For example, if AI provides an overview for topic, follow up with, can you give me more details about the challenges associated with this technology, right? And uh, like, for example, like, no, I didn't give the examples, sorry. Uh, ask for multiple options, like, for example, um, provide three different headlines for an article on the benefits of remote work. So you're saying, okay, give different, multiple things, right? Um, uh, like the variation instead of what are the benefits of solar energy try list five key advantage of using solar energy for residential power so then you get multiple output you know you can do different things right different phrasings and you will get different outputs so once again as I said don't you don't have to write this down you don't have to you know uh, keep this in your memory you can just ask chat GPT or Gemini or any other tool how should I do this better try that out you will only learn by doing this, right? If you keep doing this, then after a few iterations, you will naturally do it that way. Initially, you will not know. That's okay. That's how I learned as well, right? I, there are a lot of things I have no idea how to do, right? <clears throat> okay. Um, provide examples, right? Um, so when I make, sometimes I mean I make proposals or memos and all that, I say, okay, here's, here's, here's a guide, here's a, a winning proposal, just look at that one and try to make it like, like that one, right? Or, or here's an example of a nicely written uh, uh, motivation, use that as an inspiration and write this one. So if you give explanation, your output would be better because it knows exactly what the type of thing you want, right? So don't worry to try out, experiment and tell us. Anything that is here, you can come up with more things, right? Just think at, like, you know, you are giving somebody instructions. This is what I want. This is how you should do it. Like, and, and give as much in, in, information as possible and, and ask it to do it. This one is total opposite of the number, the point one. What is the difference? The number one point, I said, be specific. Now, what happens when you are very specific? If you are ex like extremely specific, you only get one thing, right? So what is one plus one? It's like even generative AI, most probably, except for few iterations, uh, it will say two, right? So if you are that specific, you get a very specific answer, right? But even other instructions, is more specific. So, I mean, so you can try this out, you know, it's especially as I said, uh, in Gemini, I try different uh, um, uh, prompts be very specific on exactly what I want. And I then I look at the uh, the alternate answers it gives. Most of the time, sometimes it's, all the answers are same. Why? Because I have been too specific. I've been too specific, so it has no other way to go. All the time it ends up in one place. So what do I do then? I relax it. I give it little bit of traits of flexibility. I make it little bit flexible so that it will generate multiple answers. Now I can go and check those things and select the best one. <coughs> right? So balance the creativity versus specificity. If you are very specific, you will get just one answer itself. It will be become just Google search or something. If you are very flexible, you will get all over the place and you might get very ambiguous answers. So it's a balancing act. Do I know where the balancing balance point is? Absolutely not. Do you know where is it? Absolutely not. How do you find it? <laughs> you try it out, right? You experiment, you put things, you remove things, you be specific, you be less specific. You only have to you know, try different things and uh, figure it out. Learn from mistakes, of course, that's the, the motto of the, the, your life, right? Keep like, put it into your head or write it down. Right? And one of the other things that was uh, uh, mentioned in the previous session, right? Um, like, um, how, how do you know, or do you have to know, uh, sorry, uh, your name, please? Ralph, yes. As uh, Ralph, Mr. Otto. So, Mr. Ralph asked in the morning, right? Um, do we have to know the internals of uh, Gen AI tools to get the best out of it? I answered you um, 
in somewhat, right? If you know the internals, you can get better results, yes. <clears throat> but, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, driving a car. But one of the things I forgot to mention at that time is that you have to know the type of the vehicle. That I missed that one, right? So you can't try to, uh, you can't try to um, um, go, you know, uh, car racing with a, with a tractor, right? So, so, so you need to know the capabilities of that one. So definitely, you, it's, it's, I mean, you, I mean, even, even if it's a tractor, if you know the pedal and the brake, you can drive, right? But what you can do with that and what you can do with a race car and what you can do with a truck are different things, right? So as you said, each tool has its merits and demerits, capabilities and limitations. Knowing that will help you. So for example, um, I, I use ChatGPT and Gemini uh, almost uh, equally. Um, um, so they are using uh, two different uh, um, models. ChatGPT uses GPT or Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Um, uh, Gemini is using Llama, right? So those two models, the way it is designed are very different. So if you ask ChatGPT, the type of answer you get is very, uh, it's kind of like very formal, right? It's, it's very precise, it's very formal uh, answers. You can of course ask it to be informal and all those things, you can do different things. But it's mo but kind of like a, a, a more, like a, a specific answer, whereas Gemini model is very creative. So if I want something to creative to be done, I will ask uh, Gemini to do, like a write a report or a, a proposal and all that. I'll most, I most often ask Gemini to do it because Gemini is very, very creative in doing that. Uh, whereas I want precise answers, I want uh, um, to create uh, an assignments for my students. Then I'll ask Chat GPT because it will be like you know it will be very precise, no variations, no kind of. Uh, you know, unexpected changes in that one and so on. But it doesn't mean that you won't use the other tool for that one as well. Always when I'm using ChatGPT, I will ask the same question from Gemini and see what kind of things it does. Same way, other, other way around as well. I'm using Gemini. I'll just ask ChatGPT and say, does it have a better answer? Right? Then I'll just switch. Right? As I said, it's only, uh, <clears throat> I know, you have to just keep uh, experimenting as you go. Because they, they, these tools keeps updating, right? So what you know today, somebody tells you, okay, uh, use Gemini for creative, use chat GPT for this one. Don't believe them. Keep trying, as I said, keep trying different things because they keep changing, right? So don't, don't stick to anything that you have read today because it's already obsolete, right? So once again, um, uh, I, I say this at every technology integration session, right? Um, um, you, 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 you have, you start, um, every, every journey start with one, the one step, right? The first step. So you can't, you can't go and create this elaborate, you know, prompts and uh, all this, uh, flexibility, all these things you can't do on day one, right? You have to start somewhere small. You have to try experiment different things and you learn how to do it better and better and better. Right? So, um, so that's the whole, po whole point. Now, as long as you know how to ask ChatGPT or Gemini, what can I do to improve my prompt technique? Everything is done. Right? That's all you need to do. Right? You learn that one. You just go and read. The results you get today will be different uh, from the results you get in three months' time. Right? That's the beauty of it. It keeps changing. I asked this same question. This, these things I just copied after lunch and put it in the slide, right? Why? Because if I had used the, the previous ones I had, that will be already obsolete. It's changing, right? So you need to, you don't learn something today and think this is the gospel truth. No, right? It keeps changing. Adapt to the changing um, nature of the technology, that's the only way to go, right? Uh, <clears throat> right. 
Okay, um, just for the sake of it, this is the, the older slides I had. Uh, uh, I, I'll just put it there just so that you know kind of what are the different things. Like, so you can do different type of formatting, right? Uh, what type of formatting do you need? Um, and uh, what are the format, like, you know, bold text um, of the, the titles the, and also different capitalization, punctualization, uh, uh, all those different things, formatting, you can ask it to do, right? Um, and uh, you can have like, you know, open-ended thing. Okay, I want to like, you know, I want to write, can you write a, you know, a story about, you know, this, you know, a uh, um, boy growing up in Islamabad, right? Just young boy growing up in Bang, like an like a, like a impactful or an inspiring story about a boy in, growing up in Islamabad. Like, that's a very open story. Yes, you have no idea what he'll come up with. Try it. It's very nice. It comes up with really, really nice stories. And, and then you say, okay, um, write, an, write a story about a boy growing up in Islamabad uh, who um, come, you know, who will succeed through failure. Now you give a little bit more information, but it's kind of still open, open-ended, right? Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, you can, you have different type of things like, you know, you can have clarifications, can you elaborate, you can have compare and contrast. As I said, I, I, I showed earlier role-playing. Imagine you are uh, Alan Quatermain and answers questions. Right, um, and question answer, a composer poem, problem solving, right? Suggest an innovative solution to address the traffic congestion in a major city. Um, craft a short story, provide a concise summary of the main ideas presented in the article. I mean, this is just to say. Um, so we had one of these proposals in our um, uh, learn proposal to. De to develop our digital infrastructure and uh, um, what do you call um, uh, digital transformation. It's a it's a, like a hip, really big uh, proposal uh, for a sub like a lot of money uh, funding requirement, right? So very big one, and uh, this happened just last, last week. Roshan said uh, so. The, I I wrote it. Uh, this was pre pre Genai time three years ago. I wrote it. Uh, a big document, and Roshan uh, had got a call from the, the UGC chairman, that is the HEC chairman, right here. UGC chairman saying, um, that proposal, give me uh, two sentences about what do you want to do and how to do it. Two sentences. Like he was like, what do you do? He's trying to reach me, I was unavailable. What did he do? He just got my proposal, put it into chat GPT, and ask, okay, here's the proposal. This is the purpose. Just summarize this into two sentences, right? And just wrote it, got the output, refined it, just send it to the UGC team. That easy. If I wanted to summarize that, you know, in the other time, you'll think about everything. Actually, he used a few more information as well about the, the subsequent proposals that we have done about digital transformation, about the key pillars and all that. So he incorporated that information and summarized it. So that can be done. How long? Five minutes. Right? You give the entire document, summarize this for me, done. Right? So, uh, so this, is, this is the beauty of this. Right? You know, if this is like a, I mean, for me, I feel like this is, this is a superpower. This is absolute superpower. If you learn this, how to use it, this is absolute superpower. So that's what I want. That is what we want to do, right? So there are other things. I, I'll, as I said, I'll share, share these slides. Right? You can just look at. I mean, these are these are all you can search and find, right? <clears throat> so you know, different things you can ask: argument, scenario-based, historical ones, futuristic ones, right? Instruction manuals. Any type of thing you want to generate, you can do it, right? Not to say that you ask it and just copy paste and give it to somebody. You are behind the thing, but this makes it so simple. Like so fast, you will still ensure that it's actually correct and, and, and makes sense and, and accurate, right? 
that is not being replaced. The only thing is that the, the entire thing is will be generated very quickly rather than you having, you having to type it one by one, sourcing from many different sources. Writing styles, as I said earlier, descriptive, narrative, persuasive, argumentative, reflective, technical, satirical, journalistic, poetic, instructional, any type of format uh, or type of style you want, you can do it, right? You can ask it to do it. How good it is for your liking, we don't know. You can try multiple times. You can try a different type and, and get it, right? Tone, formal, informal, conversational, authoritative, empathetic, humorous, optimistic, sincere, crisp, instructive. If you go to Grammarly, there's mm, mm, so many other more tones in, in Grammarly, like, you know, how you can write. <clears throat> and, and then comes the specific uh, purpose of this one. Um, like, after learning all this, what do we want to do? We want to know how JNA can be used in dif these different fields for different tasks. So, um, when it comes to uh, JNA in education, this is a very old one. Very old in the sense, few months old, but in generative AI terms, that's ancient, right? Um, this is, I think, uh, probably GPT 3.5 era, which is like centuries ago, yeah, <laughs> right? Uh, so now I should ask the same question. It will give me, hopefully, give, it'll, oh, not hopefully, it will give him better answer, right? So I'm, I'm going to update this one, uh, right? Uh, my question is based on like your personal experience. Uh, could you please tell us uh, some uh, common uh, pitfalls or limitations of prompting? I'll give you one today that has happened. I don't even know why it happened. Uh, so that uh, um, the table that uh, that I showed you a table that I got the information and I asked you to make it to a table. I asked Gemini to do it. It didn't. It said something wrong with the the prompt. Like. And how to overcome those limitations? So that, that's why I was coming at that one, right? So I said, so this comes to what? Um, so we had somebody who's talking about explainable AI uh, earlier. Is that gentleman here? So, so we have this uh, limitations in AI, especially which we call explainability. So, like you know, when because AI, as like earlier asked, a rule-based system we know. So if it's like temperature goes above 30, put the fan. Temperature goes below 30, switch off the fan. Rule-based system, you know something goes wrong, it's very easy to explain. Machine learning, we have no idea. Some of the simple machine learning can be explained. Advanced deep learning, machine learning algorithms, why it does, what it does, it's not explainable. So explainable AI is a massive up and coming field now because we want to know why the machine is doing that because earlier simple AI machine learning models we could actually understand now we can't so there's a specific field of explainable AI even that does not work well with a chat like you know a large language model because it's the the it's huge right so it's very very difficult to um, use explainable AI even that one yes you have a question yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, my appreciation for you uh, explaining very comprehensively about the prompt engineering and uh, Gen AI. Uh, first thing, on a lighter note, uh, I think in prompt engineering, you have mentioned here uh, the pages 11 pages or 36 pages as a prompt. Uh, I think it would take weeks to write the prompt for AI. And the amount you have already given to AI, uh, it will be very easy for us that we will only write uh, write and prompt for this purpose and AI will generate that prompt after the data it has taken from you yes. guys. And uh, secondly, uh, a very uh, on a serious note, is it a smarter approach to write that much long prompt to write uh, for uh, anything? And I have a secondary question uh, and uh, maybe a point to raise. Uh, right now, currently, Gen AI is producing data uh, based on the human data generated already after digging from the internet. It is producing the data we are uh, prompting to, from it. 
So after, as you mentioned here, the few months old data is ancient now. What will happen after few years when there will be more data of Gen AI than human-based data? And the prompt will be given from the already Gen AI data. What will happen then? For last question answering first, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody has an idea about that one. Uh, so that's where the, the ethical and responsible use of AI comes in. Uh, in European Union passed their ethical use of uh, guidelines of uh, uh, Gen AI. Uh, at the University of Peradeniya, we are coming up with AI guidelines in the Senate to be passed. Um, not to be, as I said earlier, it's not to be restrictive. Uh, because some people want to just completely stop it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing, right? You know, what the example you use it is that even if you take a knife, knife can be used for all the good things of cutting and all the things and, and, and killing people as well. Just because of that, you're not going to ban knives. Just you learn the ethical. So this is where I, in my belief, this is my belief, so I don't want to elaborate on it. Um, this is where we have to go back to our roots. As humans, if everybody is ethical and abide by do no harm guideline, we don't have to worry about anything. The problem with the, the, the problem with the world now is increased use of technology and all these things. We have lost track of our, our roots. Our, our ethics, our responsibilities, and our humanity, basically, right? That cannot be changed or replaced by AI or any tool. So we have to go back to that one. Our religious leaders, our other leaders, everybody, we have to understand the survival of the humanity does not depend on whether AI is going to succeed or not. It's going to, it's going to depend on whether humanity is going to fail, right? So that, that's, that's number one, right? So that is the long-term thing so for me if uh, hu if humanity is going to fail in another 10 years time 30 years time 100 years time that's not because ai succeeded that's because we failed as humanity so the, come to that question right so um so so the uh, the, the things that you create right um how do you how do you, how do you come up with this and of everything you need to be curated by humans right you can't have that rule definitely but if you need to have uh, it curated by humans or you generate the tools that abide by these ethical guidelines and curate properly and maybe you deal, do a quality assurance or whatever right but we need to ensure that what we provide does not go like you know i don't know whether you know that like, you know this um, uh, you have read about isaac asimov's uh, three principles of robotics it's first principle is you don't kill humans right and and then the second one is uh, you don't take any other actions that will um, uh, what do you call, violate the first one, so like so on, right? So you have like at least the basic simple principles to ensure that robots would not harm humans. Of course, there are catchy situations or, or, or catch uh, 21 situations that you have, but you know, but, but it's the general thing. Coming to the first question, uh, how to create these prompts and all that? Question was, is it a smarter way to write that long I have prompts? no idea. I have no idea. How would I know? But the thing is this, if I ask it in one page or half a page, uh, I have to make a proposal of this idea. Can you make one? I don't think it will know what to do, right? Because I have to give it, this is the proposal is about. So my prompt, as you said, 36 page prompt, it did not take me more than an hour or two to make, or maybe maximum three hours. Why? Because I, I didn't go and write that entire thing. I copied the, instructions from the grant here and I copied some other information from my site from here and I, I went and got the uh, ethical guideline from Samya just copied here right uh, so I get I, I source this information from different places say use this one use these things follow these things follow these things use this formatting uh, and this is the output I want can you please do it right so my prompt um, uh, I make it very quickly by getting from like, but what you said a very nice thing afterwards. We will, how to, how to come up with that long prompts? Used, 
Gen AI, right? How do, how do you come up with a, a 36 page or 50 page uh, uh, prompt? Use prompt engineering. Tell it, this is what I want to do. Give me uh, the breakdown of what my prompt should be, right? How do I populate this prompt? Ask Gen AI, right? So it's just like, you know, using prompt engineering or use Gen AI to create your prompts, some smarter prompts, and, and, and uh, come on up that one, right? Because it will know better than me. This is things I have used. I'm sure there are better, 100 better ways to do it, right? Go and ask uh, Chat GPT how to do it better or Gemini to do it better. So how do you vet the output of, uh, how do you vet the output? I mean, if you are, if you are uh, I mean, if you know the domain very well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, then you can vet it yourself, right? Yeah. So otherwise, I mean, I mean, in the morning you mentioned about Chat GPT, uh, GPT-4 mm -hmm. uh, having one point vet the output of uh, yeah. so these models. Yeah, let me give you one example. So, um, as I said, um, uh, in the morning I showed you, uh, I was doing, we were, actually we did uh, this project on, on um, using uh, Gen AI to generate uh, patient letters. Now, what is what are patient letters? Uh, is that uh, letters generated by a doctor? Uh, for a referral, for a discharge, for a admit admission to the, the hospital. Oh, that's all I know because I'm not a doctor and I'm not associated with any doctor. So that's the only thing I can remember, right? But go and ask, just type now, what are the type of uh, patient referral letters and how can I use LLM to do that? It will give you a nice one. Do I believe that one? I don't know. It makes sense, but do I know whether it's correct or not? I have no idea. So what, what do I do? I share with this with my medical faculty colleague and say, I'm doing this project. Would you like to be in this one? Here's what it says. Do you have any input? Right? Should, should it change? So that's what I showed in, in, in the, the AI slide. We can come up with the technology. We can come up with the data and statistics. But without the domain expert, if, I going to, if I'm going to act doctor, it's going to fail. If I did that project, thinking, okay, chat GPT is great. This is all what is there. I don't need any doctor. I will do a patient referral system uh, using chat GPT. It would fail. Why? Because it does not have the domain input, right? So what you do is, like, that's why like this is like, you know, your field, you will learn how to do this and see what can you change. But if you are doing in a different field that you are not expert of, you get their experts as well, right? That's, that's, that's what problem solving is all about. Why engineering, I mean, a lot of engineering research and all the things fail, is that, you know, engineers think, um, I, I, can, I can talk about engineers in a kind of a condescending way or, or a self-deprecating way because I'm an engineer, so, right? Um, but, you know, we think that we know better than, like, you know, like, I mean, this is something that one of my students said, which, was, which made me, like, cry. Like, one of my students, uh, like, you know, I, I mean, my, my wife is doing molecular biology, so we, were, we are always doing projects together. And I got one couple of my students to work with her to do this bio, like, you know, bioinformatics analysis. You know, those are like, you know, in published in high impact papers projects now. But she was not doing this. One of the students was not doing her work. And I called her and I said, why are you not doing this? You know, what's the problem? So my friends are laughing that I came to engineering and now I'm going doing my biology stuff. I said, like, what the hell? Who's doing, telling you these things, right? You are in engineering. Engineering is problem solving. You go and pro solve the problems of others. If you want to solve engineering problems, you are just doing coding. If you want to do a coding, that's fine. I, you came to the wrong place. You don't have to be an engineer to do coding. You can have just learn Java from outside. You could have done coding. But, but this kind of mindset is there, right? It's a wrong mindset. Like, we want to go with, to the experts and, and, and le learn from them what are your problems and, and we'll come up with a solution. Or you you ask us how what are the things we want, then we'll help you to formulate the answers. Right. Um, so, like, you know, we are looking at a like, few things, you know, Gen AI, just go and search for this. Don't look at this one, copy this one or, or photo this one, right? Uh, how, can you use, how can you use Gen AI to improve uh, education? Or how can you use Gen AI in education, right? If you ask it now, you will get a lot different answer than that. I mean, there will be a lot of overlap, but there will be a lot of new things as well. Same with finance, right? 
if you want to use, how can you use um, uh, Gen AI in finance? You know, it will give you a lot of answers, nice answers and all that. Uh, Gen AI in administration. How can ChatGPT be used in leadership practice? Decision support, knowledge augmentation, communication facilitation, talk automation, idea generation, training and development. Now, if I ask here, I know, you know, there are some who have been in administration and leadership positions for a long time, right? Or even some for, for a few years. If I ask you to come up with tasks that you can do, who would be able to come up with all these things? Top of your head. Nobody. Right? Why? Because you, know, you don't think about these things all day. Right? But you just ask a simple question. Ah, I never thought about this one. This is all that you get every time. Right? Because there are a lot of things that, you know, uh, this is sourced from a worldwide knowledge. Right? So, it's very easy. Just list it down and say, okay. Now, next, next task is, okay, good. Now, I know how to do these things. Uh, what, are, what needs to be done? So, how do I do it? Give me a plan. Give me a plan to improve this one. Let's break it down. Give me a one-year plan to do the leadership practice. As I said, the only thing, I'm not saying it's a miracle, miracle tool or anything. Don't use it blindly, right? It's, it's not anything to be used blindly. But you can use it iteratively to improve each part. So, for example, right, where to go from here? So, for example, I, I was going to do uh, a, a kind of a, a hands-on uh, trying out, but since you are so tired and it's afternoon and all that, you know, but, but try this. Uh, uh, so, so, let me say, like now, the objective of this one is how to improve, uh, how to empower NRENs by Gen AI, right? So, go, do this now or go home or go to your hotel room uh, or next week. Just do this, right? Uh, now I want to do. I want to. I want to use Gen AI to improve, learn, right? So what, what do I know? What do I do? This is my prompt, right? More or less, right? I um, I say okay. I'm 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 the the, the I'm a consultant CTO of Lanka. I'm, okay, actually I, I I make it a conversation. I ask, uh, do you know what an NREN is? Yes, it'll explain what an NREN is. Right? You can just try. What an NREN, it will explain what you Do you know what LEARN is? Yeah, Lanka Education and Research Network, and okay, fine. Um, I'm the CEO of it. Uh, uh, we, are, we are looking at ways of uh, using generative AI to improve the operations of uh, LEARN. Right? Can you give a brief uh, breakdown of how that can be done? Right? This is the question I would ask. And it will give you like a brief, big picture view of, okay, you can do this one, this one, this one. Now, this is not going to be very descriptive. It's, it'll have breakdown of things. It'll not stay true. I have no idea what the answer looks like. But if it's not the way you want, you go and ask it in a different way. Right? And then, okay. Now, I want to streamline my HR department, my human resources recruitment department. How do I do it? Give me a plan. Right? How do I automate it? What can it be done? You just go and look at the answers. See whether it makes sense. You get your HR person or HR department. Discuss with them what makes sense, what does not make sense, what can be done, and so on. So this is how you, right? You always work with the people or get them to do it. Okay? Here's how you do the Gen AI thing. Come up with a plan to transform or fully automate Streamline and automate the HR department in one year's time. Or if you can't do it in one year time, tell me how long you need. Right? So these are things that you can do. Will it work? We have no idea. But we ha at least have a idea plan now. We at least have something that we can follow up. So this is that the big ideas. Like, okay, this is what we can do. We can automate this, the, the screening process. Yeah, fine. Give me step-by-step -step instructions how to change it. Like, how do you implement this? Give me the implementation instructions. You can do all these things. Right? You can do all these things. Each one by one. Right? I want to, I want to automate this process. Okay? How do you do it? Right? It will give you, break it down. Right? Fine. How, tell me how you just do this step. 
go until you get the answers which with each implementable step that you can give to somebody and say do this right and it will come up with that answer if you ask the proper questions like the problem is this right you you can't ask that one at the right at the beginning because it will give you like a 300 page document which nobody will understand so you'll build it to get the big picture what how to break it down okay fine how to break out this particular thing it's good how to break out this part what this part this part and and then you come up with the document this is how I, how you do a proposal and other thing as well right so how to use it ask it and see right ask multiple times it will give you multiple answers. Does it mean one answer is different from the other? Now, if, if you have done a management course or any, any followed any management things, you'll, know, you'll see this, you know, goals, uh, these all goals, objectives, uh, uh, strategies and tasks. They sometimes, some, some people say it has to be G-O-S-T, some people say G-O-T-S, some people say it's a complete different thing. Does it mean those management styles will fail? No. Those are like, you know, complementary things that you can use like you know it's, there's no one one formula that will make any any place successful you can go to the same place in multiple ways right so it doesn't mean that you know if you get multiple answers that it's going to it's, it's one thing is good the other thing is bad but you can just compare things and see what works best for you it's not giving you answer the best answer or no that does not work for you okay say okay don't no 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 this this is not going to work because you know these limitations this is not a good plan because you know we have this resource limitations we have this you know we don't have the necessary manpower we don't have the the funding for to do this can you come up with a solution that needs uh, uh, this you know, we, this is the this is the number of people we have this is what their capacities are this is how much money we have come up with a plan you can tell all these things you don't have to like you know come up with that plan okay it doesn't seem work no Tell it all your problems, all your limitations, and try to come up with a plan. See whether it works. See whether it matches. If it not, go and say, no, I don't like this part. Can you change it to this way? Mm -hmm. So, Enron, I mean, Enron or any problem. So, you have a, you need to know the problem, right? I mean, so, this is a problem or this is what I want to do or I want to develop the next version of this network. So then typically, I mean, without any Gen AI, I mean, you probably do some brainstorming. So you uh, gather some colleagues, do some brainstorming, and then you come up with some plan on like how you can address that problem or like potentially like a new thing, right? So, so what you're saying is, I mean, like, so I'm trying to get a sense for like in that kind of a situation. I mean, that's the traditional way of doing it, mm -hmm. right? So where does... Gen A, I mean, can, can it help in organizing this brainstorming? I mean, I don't think it can actually replace that, that brainstorming session and come up with a specific solution for okay. your institution, um, right? Yeah, so this is, okay. So I, 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 I mentioned this one uh, uh, in the morning as well. So I want to be, I want to emphasize. So thank you very much for the question because I think it's a great place to actually stop <laughs> also, like, you know, to wind down. Um, so if you can remember what we discussed in the morning, right? Um, what this madam uh, uh, argued with me, or, or, or not, uh, not argued, not argued, argued very correctly with me about what you want AI to do, right? Now, what do you want AI to do? Do I want AI to tell me how to improve my NREN better or what should, should I do? Should I allow it to make the next decision? Absolutely not. I mean, we will take the decision, right? Leadership will take the decision. We'll set the vision based on what we want to do and taking insight from others. Now, if I ask Tuan, who's from Learn, like what he hates most, this is the question here that we had in the morning. What do you hate most in your job? What do you waste most time in your job? Doing simple repetitive tasks. So what do you want AI to do? Get me free from this boring repetitive stuff that I do every day that if I train properly even a monkey could do now instead of a monkey we have a we have AI or machines right so that's what we want to do not to envision how the end range should be uh, what's the next step for the end range I want to free up Tuan 
with this repetitive boring work so that he wakes up every day oh what the hell you know right so i want him to come refreshed okay i don't have to worry about any this mundane work let me think you know or just become bored and think okay i should do come go and build something right that's where the human creativity comes from that's where the human ingenuity comes from unfortunately we have an epidemic of overworked people where the entire creativity is lost where you, your imagination is lost you just we have made ourselves robots and 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 machines so what we want to do with gen ai is not to for it to be creative we want ourselves freed up enough that we can be creative but having said that i will go and ask gen ai now we have done all this what can we do next in enrend what are the others doing even that i ask because it will source from all the enrends in the world and tell me this is what others are doing right but this is doesn't mean that i am going to do what go, what go as, what 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 they are doing in bolivia why i state bolivia is bolivia is actually doing really well in as an enrend you know they are doing amazing work um but but i'm not just going to go and do what they are doing today because i don't know that I mean, it might not suit us like but but the thing is i can get inspiration from others which is easier to get now from gen ai so i'll i'll ask give us ideas what are the what are the things that we can do more but that's not the purpose of this empowerment thing that one is to streamline make if make the 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 day to day operations efficient and productive so that we free up ourselves to do better creative innovative work please script things out right i mean yeah. so the repetitive tasks mm -hmm. you don't i mean there are some repetitive tasks that you you don't need any artificial intelligence right eh? i mean so yeah. so it actually there is this gap between like there is human intelligence mm -hmm. maybe there are different levels of human intelligence right I mean, so there is this automation where you can script out some task which is mundane like repetitive task but then there is next level where you still need a human involvement you cannot completely script it out mm -hmm. so so it's actually like there are multiple levels and then like so yeah, you yeah, saying yeah, that uh, uh, so we we can basically appropriately use it right i mean so it's still mundane but require some human intelligence yeah 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 i mean this this is this right this is a evolving thing now let's see like this uh, the that what that that gentleman asked earlier in the day uh spam filtering right so now spam filtering was a rule based system earlier you will put the rules what are the 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 things to look for and it it filtered itself right then you had to what did you have to do so each time you figure out a new spam you will have to go and add it right you had to add a new filter you had to have add a new rule so we we kept doing that one what what did we how did we replace that with machine intelligence now we put a machine intelligence saying see what people are clicking as spam learn the pattern try to predict give a probability of whether this is spam or not so if you if you go and look at a spam filter it's basically it's not a not a, a binary thing it's actually a probability value it's it's a, it's a score right it's a score value so uh, above one above certain number you just completely discard like you know definite spam and then what you get in your spam folder is actually just above that threshold which should not be sent to but even then some come to your inbox they are like below that one so you click that as a spam it goes to that one the spam machine learning will learn it add to the new the, the knowledge that you have already and do better next time so this is because i i i was in system administration for uh, for long very well like a, a 10 years before i actually uh, um uh, started teaching again um so so what you like you know i mean even then i was actually working as a network director of network our network in the university so what i would do is you know automate these tasks you know just you know check the logs or like you know monitor the logs and all that It's rule based systems right but uh, if i have if i have um, ai what would i do i will have ais to detect for anomalies now how can you write a, a rule for an anomaly detection i don't even know what the anomaly is why is it called an anomaly because it's it goes away from the accepted norm how do you understand how do you how do you figure how do you detect a, a anomaly by machine learning clustering unsupervised learning 
you just need have this cluster something beyond this one mm, something fishy could be good could be bad we don't know but it's an anomaly let's go and check what it is now you need human intervention right maybe depending on the anomaly we might take certain decisions if it's a missile launch system there's an anomaly what do you do <laughs> you lock entire thing <laughs> right you lock entire thing and human go and check right you don't wait you don't run the system anymore so based on the in the criticality of system you know you can take decisions right yes i think okay one last question and we'll wrap up mm -hmm. but uh, isn't it uh, uh, that uh, things like uh, gen ai is going to reduce the creative and uh, innovative thinking in the near future um once again uh, i had one slide uh, in the like, future uh, uh, things like gen, gen, gen AI mm -hmm. is going to reduce mm -hmm. innovative and creative thinking. Uh, yeah, so it's like this. It cannot this. stop. I I understand that it cannot stop, but it can reduce. <clears throat> so it's a it's an excellent question, uh, and I I I mean this is actually the biggest biggest concern and biggest problem everybody has, right? Let me give you an answer from a historical perspective, because this has been the same argument that has been there uh, when, uh, when, let's say, uh, when Gutenberg came up with the printing press, right? The, so the, the printing press, when the printing press came, what was the argument? Now the knowledge is going to be printed everywhere. You don't have to remember anything our creativity, our, our knowledge is going to uh, go away. You know, you don't have to remember anything because everybody thinks it's printed in paper. It's useless. What happened? It's created a knowledge revolution. What happened? Earlier knowledge was just limited to few people, few clerics who just memorized everything. Now it was in paper. Now you can distribute it everywhere. What happened? Everybody started learning. Not everybody. Gradually, everybody started learning. What did it do to the people who memorized these things? Our memory capacity is limited. So they had used their memory just to save it there. Now they could keep it aside, use it for creating more things with, with their memory capacity, right? And, and, and let's think about, I can, that lady said earlier, like using a calculator, right? Using a calculator, what happened? Did it make us stupid in terms of uh, uh, mathematical ability? No. Right? I mean, if you want to solve all mathematical things by in your head, that is fine. Uh, AI, like we are using for cognitive uh, uh, sort of things like, so that is not like calculator things and that okay. the, you yeah, cannot. I'm, I'm coming to that one, right? Yeah. So, the, so the thing is this, right? It's like, it's the way that you use AI. If you rely on AI, just like a person who relies on calculator to um, get one plus two, you will lose all mathematical ability. But if you go for higher level of higher mathematics and use the calculator to solve the equations, then you are using your brain power at a higher level. But did it make some people stupider than they used to be where they remember the, the absolutely did. So it does not say that it cannot make it. If you use technology, people can become dumber. It does not mean it happens because of technology. Because I can tell from this one, and, and, and a couple of couple of things I tell. So my wife, um, so she she's a, she's a professor in agriculture. So she she do a lot of research writing, and she has been using free version of Grammarly. So free version of Grammarly don't tell you what the wrong what is wrong. It just gives you a number saying there are this many num uh, errors in the thing. So you know what happened? Like, I mean, her English is good, of course, but she l learned how to detect what is wrong and she will go and correct these things. And now she doesn't need Grammarly because like she has learned it so much, right? She knows by looking at it, ah, this is wrong. Why? Because with using Grammarly AI, she had learned what is the right use, what is the wrong use, right? No, no, no. So now... You come to a stage that you consciously do this. After a while, you learn all the grammar rules and you don't even know it, AI. Now, my point, my perspective, all this proposal development and all that, my creativeness has skyrocketed. 
I am creating things I could never imagine. But let's go beyond that one. Um, this like, you know, um, Delhi, art and all that. People are saying, it's like, you know, it's like, it's not art. It's not, you know, it's image creation. It's not a thing, right? Now, it's the same argument, like, you know, earlier you have paintings and then you come up with cameras and people start taking photos. Is it, is it a replacement of photos with the, the art? No. Like, so what, what, it did, what did it do? Did, was, was a painter a good photographer? Probably not. Is a good photographer a good painter? Doesn't have to be. Is, is it not complementary? Like good photograph and good art we can enjoy. But say that you, you're not dexterous at all. You don't even have, say, your hands. But you can just instruct a, a computer to generate an image that comes in your head. Right? And if that can convey some information or knowledge or idea to somebody, is that, isn't it a form of art? Right? So this, the boundaries of what we call art today will be different from tomorrow. Right? So it's evolving, but we want to kind of uh, drift, like define it or, or restrict it to what we know today. Tomorrow is different. Anyway, I think... Um, uh, we are out of time, right? So, um, so what I want you to do is uh, please um, um, uh, think about uh, your your field and and uh, right, uh, you, what you want to do. Different areas, uh, try out different things, break it down, come up with uh, come up with different uh, things to do. Uh, uh, very big picture ideas are fine. I mean, you don't have to go to breakdown and all that. You know, this is what I am doing. This is my day-to-day -day task. You know, this is what ChatGPT told me that this is what we are going to try. And we tried this, you know, all these things. This is my email. As the B at eng.pdn.ac.lk. Can you put the slide, please? Right? Um, so, please uh, let us know. And as I said, um, um, we'll be get, very glad to... Uh, um, get your feedback, your use cases, how it's helpful, how it's not helpful, right? All these things, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, this is not an attempt to say uh, uh, Gen AI is great, everybody should use it for everything. Absolutely not. We need to figure out how this can help us do things better, right? Makes lives better, makes the world a better place. That's the whole idea. Um, as I said, um, We'll be using this information, the survey knowledge and feedback that we'll get from you um, to develop the curriculums and all that. We'll have two more workshops in next two APANs. So APAN uh, 59 uh, in Japan and APAN 60 in Hong Kong. Uh, we'll have two training, uh, two, another two workshops or those things, actually three day workshops we have planned uh, and we will be providing uh, fellowships uh, about 16 to 20 fellowships for specifically for those works to attend those workshops as well. Uh, keep a lookout for those fellowships. We'll be announcing through um, APAN website as well as our. There'll be for that particular thing. We'll offer yes for that particular project. Yeah. For that particular one, we'll have a separate one um, uh, for for that particular only. So for the next two APANs, we'll do that. Um, and we will get you, so even if you can't share now, do things and come and share in the next workshops, right? Uh, and we will put this all, uh, all this knowledge into an open education resource, which we will uh, launch at APAN 61. I mean, we'll keep it uh, online from an initial point, hopefully by APAN 59, but we will officially launch it uh, where, you know, anybody can come and learn and all that by APAN 61 uh, in, in Bangladesh in, in, in February to, uh, 2026, right? Uh, uh, right, so, so uh, your contribution, so basically the idea is um, uh, let us work together to, to, to improve uh, all our operations, right? So because it's, not, it's a community effort, if we all get together and, and share our knowledge and help each other, we can actually make it a better place for everybody. So um, hope you got something out of these three sessions. So thank you so much for attending. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, on behalf of uh, APAN as well as uh, uh, APAN uh, Bird of Feathers on HPC AI, which is... Uh, uh, 
through which we organize this one. So if you have a free time, tomorrow afternoon we have uh, uh, the BOF session on HPC AI. It's just uh, we have one invited speech and we'll talk about the future of uh, BOF on HPC AI. It's not going to be a workshop, it's just a meeting, a regular meeting. But if you are free, just uh, you know, um, drop in uh, for the meeting as well, because we have a lot of things planned and if you have if you have uh, your feedback about uh, how to move forward in HPC AI uh, uh, into the future uh, in APAN, uh, we are very much welcome. Okay, so hope to see you all tomorrow uh, at uh, the BOF on HPC AI as well. Thank you so much and have a great evening.